Hello my friend, I welcome you all to the Creative Thinkers Hub channel. Today we are going to explore the world of shadows. For that, first what we are going to do is take a rectangle. Okay, and let's understand how shadows are done first. Okay, so the most important thing is let's come to a shadow tool and let's try and make a shadow of this. Is it being made? Okay, even if I say normal, is the shadow coming? No. Why is it not coming? A simple reason is that this is just an outline. It has no fill. As soon as I put any fill, you get a shadow. Okay. So, this is the basic shadow tool. Okay. You can have an inward shadow and you can have an outward shadow. So, this is how your shadow inside will look and this is how your shadow outside will look. Okay. In this, there are so many presets shadow on top shadow on the right these are all presets and then what we did here is a custom made shadow okay so this is glow so normally what you get is a glow okay that uh, when you when you pull it out you get a glow so this is your inner edge so this one got activated and this one and it went on to multiply directly okay so this is how this is done so basically it's your normal thing is your medium glow and inner bottom outer bottom whatever that is there that is this type of this is your default okay now what are these this is your opacity of the shadow so the more i make it the harder the shadow will be okay it will become it will become 100 percent black also when worked on okay it will become 100 percent black yes so normally shadow works at around about 50 percent okay and this is your feathering that how much you want this shadow to feather okay so this i'm um, purposely i'm doing it in the inner shadow okay the reason being that so this is when you want to make it very 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 subtle so the shadow will be spread all over okay then so this is your feathering now this is your gaussian blur with the shadow that what do you want you want a middle bevel you want an outside bevel okay what kind of Thing you want you want linear you want squared you want inverse squared so it will go in the opposite direction and you want flat so which will be a solid zero zero so there will be no feathering at all over here okay so this is what it is and this is your distance so as i move this you see the distance will change the x and y so this is how your basic shadow tool works now let's say i don't want to work with this okay i let's clear the shadow and in this you know i want a shadow which goes this way okay that goes from down touching this and coming up here so let's take an uh, image okay okay so now we have taken them on our page and this image you now i want the shadow to be coming down this way that's very simple okay how do i make a shadow work that way take a rectangle exactly the size of your object extend it further now you take an ellipse tool okay and make an ellipse that comes this way okay then you trim it okay make sure that your ellipse is bigger now you give it a shadow let's say 50 percent gray no outline control page down right let's make it a little darker something like this and then this is option one you give it a transparency okay so this you give it a normal transparency and say overlay so if you have any background behind it will overlay so let's say this was my background behind the image okay so if i select my shadow from your transparency you can even do multiply so you will get a this kind of a shadow now let's say you know you're not too happy with this you don't want such a solid shadow so just clear everything in none and all you need to do is just come here and uh, blur gaussian blur okay come into gaussian blur and that's where your shadow comes in directly okay you adjust it as per how strong you want your shadow okay and this is how you get this 
nice good shadow where you think where you are having a feel that this is curving okay so this is how you get this slight curved shadow you know where the image kind of looks like as if it's raising itself now the reason why i've taken this image is that now let's say that this dancer is there i want to create a shadow in this direction okay what happens when i do this let's take a shadow from here and i want his shadow going upwards what happens okay something very funny happens here let's say i want my shadow going outside not inside and it's it's not giving me anything so the you if you want a shadow of this person okay it's very 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 simple what you need to do trace bitmap quick trace and it's done okay so this quick trace is going to have the white with the background ungroup it remove the white background okay so if you see in wireframe you will realize this so go into wireframe and a little bit of the background is yet there we remove that now just select now there is some shadow down here also remove that also okay and this object we are going to weld it okay now this is the output that you get on welding now let's see why these holes are there so go into view say enhance okay these holes are there we remove these holes so come here delete these got it this is one this is option one please note this is option one so you keep this overlay it okay take this keep this as your base point and skew it okay as and how you want it so the shadow should go this way okay and then give it a gradient fill. so we come here give it a gradient fill from here to there okay so this is how you are going to create this dancing man is here okay so this is how you create a shadow this is again option one of what we are doing the second way of doing it is let's duplicate this so that we know the difference between how both the shadows look again we quick trace it okay now we come here ungroup delete the white area view enhance uh, sorry view wireframe delete all the unwanted areas come here and instead of welding we say create an outline okay let's see what the outline has done you see that you directly get this you are getting this directly the watch also is considered white so again on this also my friends we might have to do some work just come here with your bezier tool click here okay go node to node and close it come here and say weld okay same with any other part if it has been cut in a different way i think we are we are good with this okay a little bit of his uh, this is gone just take this tool all over again from here fill it up and weld it okay we are done this is our outline now what you do in this is take this away we don't need him anymore or we'll keep him on the side okay take this press control and make sure it's exactly where you want it to be okay this is our person properly in his shadow now take this object power clip 
place inside frame and put him inside this frame. Now you take your normal shadow. See that? So your shadow comes in this way also. If you want a more solid type shadow, to do this, you want an actual diffuse good shadow that uh, you know uh, works in whatever way, then you could take this shadow. Got it? So depending on how you want your shadow to be, you can work by uh, welding this or create an outline and power clip it and your image only itself is creating a shadow because you are filling the outline and making a solid object out of it. Okay. Here you can come here and you can say no fill also because there is an image inside so it is filled. It will not be empty. So this is our fourth type of shadow. Okay. A fifth shadow is something that people use to texturize the page. So let's say this wasn't there. I come here. Let's come into fill. Okay. So let's come into different type of fills. Come here. Interactive fill. And let's come into in samples over here. Let's come here into properties. Okay. Dockers. Because it's, it's a little difficult to work around here. We come into properties and it will give me the properties of this object. Okay. And what are the properties? So I say come into fill, it will give me samples. We come into vegetation. Okay. Now over here, say come here and say I want to select this fill and I want to edit it. Okay. So this is how you vegetation samples in the right fill. Come here and edit it. And uh, let's get into our browns. Okay. So this. Okay. And uh, now the same thing we go dark brown. Got it. If you think that this is a little too uh, too small increase the texture size okay uh, so you you volume inside of 83 make it 100 automatically your texture will increase in size and say okay now uh, in in many many of these uh, artworks and things like that what we have seen is that there is a, a border type thing over here so you could just take this come here okay say inner shadow come your inner edge and complete it this way okay like how we learned before or what you could do is control z make another rectangle okay fill it with black no outline and give it a trans so that's how make sure that your transparency is straight okay uh, I always advise that you work with the line of your object. So you will never go wrong. See that? Okay. So this is how you could make a more solid type shadow. So this is one copy, paste, flip it, write. Okay. Cop select both of them, copy, paste, rotate 90 degrees. Top, bottom, again select both of them, press shift and squeeze them in. That's how you get your whole shadow. So uh, I've just uh, copy pasted this, the shadow remains the same. Okay. Now, uh, well, there is one more shadow. This is shadows. Okay, this is shadows and make it bold, make it big and uh, let's put our two friends together and give this some space. Okay, so a child is also there, she's a little sad that you know she's not been enlarged. We enlarge this and now we work on this. Now when text is involved, okay, first your text should be different color from the shadow. 
make sure that you're using a good color for your text okay let's put it white considering our background is textured this way and then you could take your normal shadow tool and do this so automatically this gets raised now instead of multiply we do normal okay opacity you reduce it so make it 80 so it's a darker shadow yes and your feathering is fine sometimes what happens that this black gets changed so this you can again change it to any color that you want you want a red shadow you'll get red you want a black shadow you'll get black okay got it so this is your normal shadow with text now let's take this text again let's clear the shadow okay and i don't want something that is diffuse i want something that is more solid more uh, aggressive so say block shadow okay once you do block shadow it will let's take the same angle but see the difference between the two so this gives you a pure black line of following this line is following it is just not a shadow that is at a space okay even in this one if i give the shadow 100 percent darkness also and zero percent feathering i will get the space can you see the space over here so this is a space here this will get beveled okay there is a difference you see this this is not joining where this is joining okay so that's the difference between both of them even if i made it solid with zero percent feathering that is what i'm going to get okay so this is your last and final type of shadow in this particular thing you can again play with what kind of a shadow you want okay let's say i do this so even these 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 spaces in between get filled okay so wherever d o's are there a's are there they will get filled so you're depending on how you how much you pulled it you're my a is also getting filled in the first one but once i do this my d and o's will also get filled so this is how you can play with shadows uh this works same even for objects okay whatever that's happening with the text right now it will work with objects also so my friends if you like this video please like subscribe and do not forget to share because only sharing increases knowledge thank you